so now we are looking one example about the using matrix method in paraxial optic this is our first example and uh, uh, this is problem number six in Pedroti textbook uh, however the chap number uh, chapter number is different for different editions so in edition three uh, this is the chapter 18 and the problem number six so it says that the light rays enter the plane surface of a glass semisphere of radius 5 cm and refractive index 1.5. Using the system matrix representing the hemisphere, determine the exit elevation and angle of a ray that enters parallel to the optical axis and at an elevation of 1 cm. The second question, enlarge, enlarge the system to a distance x beyond this hemisphere and find the new system matrix as a function of x. And the last question, using new system matrix, determine where the ray will cross the optical axis. So here is our uh, sketch of, uh, of our image. So here the black one is optical axis. And here we have glass hemisphere with radius R and the ray is entering at a height of one centimeter when we are talking about uh, question A. And then it's leaving hemisphere. Of course, it is obvious that it will leave at the same height, but that we will prove by using uh, system matrix. And uh, it is leaving at Y1 and alpha uh, angle, which is alpha 1. Okay, so let's see the part A. So here, as the same way as we were building uh, the matrix for the entire system, again, we have three matrices which are corresponding to one to reflection, one to translation, and one to reflection, uh, re sorry, one, the first one to refraction, the second one to uh, translation and the third one to refraction again. And so M3 is refraction on the last surface, M2 is translation here, M1 is refraction on the first surface. And then we are writing the um, matrices corresponding to M1, M2 and uh, M3. So here is M3. Uh, I think that it doesn't need any special commons, so we are here. M2 is translation matrix from, uh, from this point to this one. And this translation matrix of so 5 cm is a distance, uh, which is practically the radius. And M1 is refraction on, uh, in this point uh, that matrix corresponds to and now first we are looking to the result of a multiplication of m2 times m1 and here is the uh, resulting matrix and now we are multiplying m3 with the result of m2 times m1 and so here we found the matrix of the entire system, which we were looking for. So now, by using these matrix, we need to find the height and angle of output ray from the system, which is entering on the uh, one centimeter above the optical axis. So here, the alpha zero is zero because it is entering parallel to the optical axis of course on the last surface it is refracting so alpha one obviously is not the same as alpha zero so it's not zero and from here it obvious that we will get y one the same as y zero since we are entering perpendicular to the surface so we are coming at normal incidence to the to the first surface so the direction of the beam is not changing so now about our matrix we have coefficients a is equal 1 b is equal 10 over 3 
c is equal minus 1 over 10 and d is equal 2 over 3. So now if we uh, remind our equation which we started from, so the position in the output of the system is a times y0 plus b times alpha 0. In our case it will be 1 centimeter which is obvious because we have uh, we, we are entering at zero uh, angle at normal uh, incidence. For the alpha 1 we have uh, the same equation c and d coefficients here and we found that we are going out of the surface at minus 0.1 radian which corresponding to minus 5.7 degree. So please pay attention that we got minus sign here. We didn't mention before but uh, there is also sign convention for uh, the matrix method as well. So if the angle is positive with respect to the optical axis we have positive number if the angle is below is going down from the uh, line parallel to the optical axis this angle we accept as negative angle okay so now we are going to next uh, so we, we found the position and angle of the ray in the output of our system so the next question is to extend our met to extend our system to the distance x beyond the uh, lens so for that one we are adding one more translation from this side so it corresponds to adding the matrix translation matrix in front of the matrix which we had before so this is the matrix which we found before and we are adding one more translation matrix from this side so if there would be question to extend also the system in front of the lens from the right, from the left side we would add one more matrix from the right side to the main matrix but that, that we will discuss in some other examples as well so and now we found the resulting matrix and of course this resulting matrix is the function of x so now uh, so the, as the function of x uh, for y for the height above the optical axis so as we would expect now the angle since there is no any refract elements anymore after the lens or after the hemisphere so the alpha angle will not change so if we look on this matrix the only height will be function of the distance but since D, uh, C and D coefficient is not X dependent the alpha will always stay the same after the system which is obvious now we can look on this system and we would see that uh, before every time we when we were deriving the metric uh, the system matrix for teen or t lens we also always uh, accept the input plane of our system the same as the surface of the the, the first surface or as the surface of the first lens etc and the output plane in our previous cases were always the last surface but of course we can our, uh, we can actually we can define the input and output plane of our system even if we have one lens the input plane and output plane the doesn't need exactly to be on the surface of that lens so we can extend our system at, and it's very useful trick in many many problems and then so we can extend it just by adding translation to the already existing matrix of the system so 
Now, our input plane is still the surface of the first optical element of our system. The output plane now is somewhere uh, beyond the uh, optical element of our system. But so here is our entire optical system and we have input and output plane now. So now, if you look on the part C, there is a question where the, light, the ray will cross the optical axis. So now we are using the same matrix which we found, the extended, the new matrix of the system, including this distance X. And we are just writing simple equations. So since Y1 is equal A times Y0 plus B times alpha 0, and this Y1 must be equal 0, we have very simple equation from which uh, we, we have even more simple equation which uh, says that x is equal 10 centimeter. Okay, so this is one example and of course we will have several examples more.